What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Cardboard from Mars. Uh, this is Nima with my pal Nate. How are you guys doing? Um, Turmoil just came out, Nate. So we thought it would be cool to look at the different corporations from Turmoil. What do you think? Yeah, this is going to be great. I'm, uh, you know, I've, as we've talked about on the stream, uh, most of the expansions are not my favorite, but I do love every time they come out with new corporations because the new corporations can really change the game. Yeah, this this uh, expansion is looking to change the game quite a bit in a ways the other expansions didn't, so we're pretty interested in this one in particular. Um, but given we actually haven't played it yet, um, we're not going to go into too much detail about the expansion itself, but instead talk about the corpse because we feel like we can talk about those ones without really needing to play it. So let's jump right in. We got Lakefront Resorts. Yeah. All right. So Lakefront starts with 54 cash. Uh, every time anyone plays an ocean, your Emmy production goes up one. And uh, you get three money instead of two anytime you place anything next to an ocean. Yeah, also, this, we, this, we shouldn't ignore the that this starts with a building tag. Oh, for sure, yeah. No, I think Lakefront Resorts is very good. I mean, when you think about the really strong corporations from the original game, um, most of them are the ones that start you with a lot of opening cash, like Credit Core, Teractor, things like that. Um, 54 is a lot. I mean, that starts yeah. you off quite a bit. And, it is. You know, um, there's a lot of cards in the game that... that let you place ocean tiles early you know for example like imagine you're playing lakefront resorts and you have ice asteroid in your opener yeah you're gonna play this get a bump of two to your economy and you're gonna soak up some cards or get the steel or titanium bonuses off those ocean tiles yeah not to mention the two tr so yeah that's right i mean it it turns it turns all of these cards like imported hydrogen, it just gives you so much more value because you're also getting a bump to your your ME production. Right. Um, another really great one to start with um, is um, Convoy from Europa, which is uh, like already a good card, but then you suddenly you're just getting an ME bump as well. I mean, it just makes all of these cards so good early game. Totally. Um... So, yeah, basically, this corp guarantees that you're going to get, what, nine Emmy production from it, given there's that many ocean tiles. Now, of course, you want to get these out earlier than later um, because that enables certain cards for you, right? Yeah, totally. So, like, um, and, and this is something that you, it's a strategy point that you know about that your opponents don't. So, if you know that you're playing Lakefront Resorts, in your opener, if you have, if you're trying to decide which cards to keep, and you have kelp farming, for example, like you know, you're going to take this card because you're going to be prioritizing getting these oceans out early, um, and so you know that kelp farming is going to probably come down a generation or two earlier and be and be quite good. Right. You know, another card in this in this sort of uh, in this vein would be something like uh, Great Dam, which again, um, it's just. Nice cheap energy production, a point, uh, building tag, and you know that you're going to be getting these ocean tiles down early, so this card goes up in value. Totally. Um, now, let's let's talk about that uh, building tag that's on the corp. Um, that's I thought that was an interesting addition to this corp. Uh, it's basically what that's, you know, that's putting you into the builder milestone, right? Yeah, I think that's actually a pretty significant tag, like you mentioned. Um, you know, because like out of the opening milestones, um, you know, like Terraformer, uh, you know, Mayor, Gardener, this really doesn't, Planner, this really doesn't help you with all those. So having that building tag uh, to, to move you towards builders is actually quite helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was an interesting addition. So, yeah, that's... But yeah, what else is there to talk about with this corp? It's just pretty. It's pretty solid, I'd say. You know, it's really solid. And we like haven't it. talked about like uh, in, in, increasing the money from your adjacency bonus to to ocean tiles, but that's also just adds up. I mean, it's really good. I mean, there's like yeah. like the number of times that you're activating that in a game, 
it's a lot. And particularly if you're putting down those ocean tiles early, you're going to have even more opportunity to, to get more money back from it. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's pr- I mean, it's pretty good. I don't think it's like game changing or anything. You're probably going to get like five to ten credits off of that. Lakefront um, Resorts reminds me a lot of uh, Saturn Systems in the sense that, um, I mean, part of what's good about Saturn Systems is that other people want to play Jovian yeah. Tags. And right. so, like, if somebody plays a Jovian tag early and you're playing Saturn Systems, um, you know, like, basically, you just you just got an ME production for that card. And, right. you know, the the Lakefront Resorts is, is similar in the sense that people are going to want to play Ocean Tiles. They have and, to, in fact. <laughs> yeah, they have to. And so you're going to just get benefit from it. Like, you you know, like you're going to play some of these ocean tiles, but like other people are going to as well, and you just get passive benefit from it. Yeah, ex- exactly. That's why it's so powerful. And then I'll st- uh, throw 54 money on top of that. It's pretty solid corp. Yeah, totally. So what are you going to rate this corporation? I'm, I'm going to give it... I'm going to give it an A minus. I think Lakefront Resorts would be one I'd be very happy to start with. Yeah, I, I agree. I might go B plus just because the milestone fight is hard for this corp. Um, but I, I would go B plus A minus. I'm not sure which. I like it though. Yeah, I think I think that's a good that's a good point. The milestone could be a weakness. Um, all right. So for the next corporation, uh, let's talk about. Let's talk about uh, Prystar. This this corporation, uh, very interesting corporation. Um, what are what are your you know? First of all, you want to just kind of go over. What yeah, it does? let's let's run it down. So okay, you start with fifty three money. You decrease your two TR two steps. Um, so that's interesting. Now the effect is so. After the generation's done, during the production phase, if you did not get any TR this generation, add one token to this card, and then you get one point per token. Oh, sorry, one token, and then six money. And then you get one point at the end of the game for each token on there. So basically, any turn you didn't terraform, you get a point and money. So this is interesting. Um, you're starting at a TR deficit, but... You can build them back back by not tier terraforming. I think I think Prize Star is very good, and I think it's like the um, much much better version of of uh, UNMI. Um, so basically, this this corporation it it's to your benefit to not terraform. Because every time that you don't terraform, you get a point in six money, right? So um, think about that in comparison to UNMI, which like basically you have to, in order to activate UNMI's ability, you have to terraform every generation and pay three credits, right? Yeah. So like this one gives you a point and six cash for not terraforming, which allows you just like so much more flexibility in terms of like you're just passively getting that benefit whereas you and I like warps your whole strategy to like play cards at the wrong time right so the, the only problem here is you're not getting t you're getting points not tr so it's not bumping your economy um but yes you're getting the six money back uh but you're also losing some money Due to not getting TR, and in fact, you're losing. You're starting with minus two TR, so you're. It's quite a deficit. Like I, I, I'm not sure yet that this is good as you think it is. I think it's. I think it could be good. Um, basically, the way I see playing this corp is, you focus on building your economy really hard at the beginning because you know you you want to take advantage of the effect pretty well. So. You know, say the first three, four generations, you focus really hard on building your economy, whether that's steel, titanium, or just straight up uh, credit production. And then mid to late game, you really terraform hard. And, you know, maybe you even build up some heat production. Um, So, yeah, by that time, hopefully that the bonus effect here has let you build up some amount of money. And plus your uh, your production cards. What do you think? 
Well, here's how I think about it. Let's say, let's say in an average game, how many rounds do you terraform versus not terraform? And I think that like my experience playing UNMI, like how annoying it is to have to bump a TR parameter every turn. Like you, you're like going through these major contortions to try and be able to do that, gives you a sense that like you actually don't terraform every generation. I mean, there. Sure. I think in an average game, you probably terraform five out of the ten generations. Let, let's say that that's like a baseline, right? And a lot of okay. them, you miss, like, a, like think about those early turns, like turns two through four, like, often you just don't terraform. And it'd yeah. be pretty easy not to if you if you were specifically trying not to. So let's say as a default that you, you terraform half the time. So what that's saying is that you're going to generate 30 cash in five points passively mm -hmm. throughout the course of the game. So, but let's not forget it's essentially three points because you you we're down two TR. Um, well, you're down two TR, which affects your money. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah I see it's, what you're saying. it's it's net three points. Yeah, you're right. But I mean, even then, like it's like most of a milestone, right? I mean, like it's how would award. you say? It's like an award. Basically. Like what if you would say like okay. Because you, you're going to be up 10 cash after all that's done, right? Because let's say over the course of the game you lose 20 cash because of the, the bump to your TR. Yeah. And then you you gain, so it's 10 cash and 3 points. And you start with 53. And that's like kind of an average case. If you really if you really lean into this and you you like do all of your terraforming in three generations or something, then you have a full milestone for free. Mm. Yeah, I, I guess so. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. Like, I'm not convinced about this corp yet. It doesn't have a tag either. Um, this one, I think we need to play to really see how good it's going to be. It is complicated. I mean, I, I guess when I was looking at this, you, you are right. I didn't realize that it kind of puts you at a deficit of two points. That makes it worse. Um, it's it's complicated. I feel like this card could be pretty good, though. I um, Yeah, I think it's a higher skill corp than some of the other ones. I mean, the other thing is that, like, another way of thinking about it is that you just start with, like, plus four economy. I mean, if you don't terraform for the first four generations, you're just getting four cash back every turn. Yeah, like, that's pretty good. Like, um, like if you start a game with acquired company, or like anything that bumps you by four, like you're pretty happy right. about that game. Right. It's really quite crucial that you, <coughs> sorry, you start with some good engine, or you get some good engine down early. Because um, you, you know you don't want to keep going. You don't want to be in like generation six and not be terraforming. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, but like the way it's not gonna, it, you're not gonna do it that way. You're not gonna like just not terraform for seven generations and then terraform at the end. You're gonna go like three generations, no terraforming. Then you're gonna yeah. do a bunch of terraforming, and then you're, you know, yeah. so you're you're gonna like you're gonna choose those rounds to terraform when when you have a lot to do. Right. But yeah, that makes sense. I this is I think this is a really interesting corporation. It really changes the way that you're gonna play the game. Um, you raised some good points, Nima. I think I guess I guess I'm gonna give it a a B, and see how it goes. Maybe maybe it might drop to a B minus, but it seems good to me. Yeah, I'm tentatively gonna give it a C plus. C plus. So you're not into Price Star. I'm not so. I don't know. Like, it's I I do think it's a really interesting corp. Like I think it'd be kind of fun to play. Um, I'm not. Sh I'm just not sure how strong it is. Yeah, I think. I mean, you've kind of convinced me a little bit. Um, I, I still, I still feel like it could be kind of a dark horse, but um, I don't know. It we'll, could we'll be. To, I, I could to be totally wrong here. Like, I, I, I admit this. I could be totally wrong. Um, so, all right. Who do well, we got let's, next? Let's move on to. Uh, let's move on to the next one. So this is an interesting one. Um, I think they did. I, I just want to interject here and just say, like, I think they did a really good job with these corporations. Um, all of them are yeah. interesting, potentially powerful. Um, I'm, I'm excited to play all of these. I Next. agree. Like, sorry, I was gonna say, like, some of the some of the corp packs in the previous expansions haven't really been that exciting. 
So I agree. Okay, we have Falaris here now. So, Falaris, you start with 47 money. As your first action, you have to place a green retile and then obviously raise the oxygen. So it's bonus effect. So each new adjacency between your tile and an opponent's tile gives you a standard resource of your choice, regardless of who played the tile. So this is this is where it gets really interesting. So uh, standard resource means any any of those you know any of the resources on your board, right? It can be titanium. Yeah, this one like I just cannot wait to play this corporation. Like if you have somebody in your group that is is uh, kind of annoying. Um, you know, that, that, uh, I'm not naming any names, you know, like that person (laughs) might be me. Um, you are going to hate it when they have this, this corporation, because this corporation just turns every hate card into like way better. Like imagine (laughs) industrial zone, right? Or industrial center. Like this court, this card, it's not very good, but imagine playing this and just dropping it down in between like two cities and an ocean tile and you're just like oh i get two <laughs> cash and two titanium and i blew up your spot yeah well the ocean tile you wouldn't get anything for the ocean tile right it would be like well, you things... still just get you get two cash back for no, that that's, tile, that's true, right that's true. Like, i mean that's the thing like usually when you play industrial center you're playing it next to a city and an ocean tile or something just to defray the right. cost but like imagine this with Falaris, you're just gonna get you're gonna get sick like two titanium back too it's just it's insane yeah this is a pretty fun corp so like do you know what's interesting about this is like i think the way this is written if like say you place uh that industrial center and then like the next generation if someone places anything next to the industrial center i think you get another bonus yes you do i mean this thing is just so annoying I mean, like imagine playing, imagine like any of these cards that go between other people's cards, like um, Urbanized Area. Yep. I mean, you're going to drop this down, you're going to pick up a bunch of Titanium, and you're going to nerf all the spots around right. where it goes. Right, like you already made it annoying to play any like greenery around the city they put it in between. Now it's even worse. <laughs> I mean, imagine, imagine somebody has like a perfect spot for plants and you drop Nuclear Zone down get yeah. a bunch of titanium and then they don't want to play anything next to you cuz you're just going to yeah. get more titanium. Yeah. It's it's brutal. This it's, card, <laughs> I love this card. <laughs> um the other one that's just like so brutal, like all these cards are so brutal, commercial district. Yeah, this one this one just that's going to hurt so bad. <laughs> Like, 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 oh, I'll have three points and three titanium, and oh, and and don't right. play anything next to my commercial district. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you know? Here, here's another funny thing that you could do with this. So, like, let's say you did commercial district. You place it between like three, like a, a city or two. You could you could get plants back out of that. Say you have some plant strategy. So you get some plants out of it. Use that plant, put it next to your own tiles, get more plants. You know, do you see what I'm saying here? I mean, just just think about a board state at the end of a game, and like think about how intermeshed everybody's tiles are. Yeah, you're, you're gonna get a lot of value out of this Filares. Like, I think it pairs best with with a titanium strategy, just because. I mean, you could you could imagine a game in which you generated thirty titanium off of this card (laughs) i mean like think about that for a second right i mean i i think it's quite possible that you could do that um it would have to be a really ground heavy game uh, ground strategy game i don't know i mean i think yeah i maybe but I, i mean you're just gonna maybe 30 is a little a little aggressive but i mean even if you just pick up 10 or 15 like that's pretty good you just get to play a big space card for free undoubtedly like it's a really strong bonus so uh so like what else is good about this like so the the greenery obviously gets you into gardener right so like you have a big advantage there getting into a milestone you also you also have a building tag there which you know also helps with builder just like the last corp uh so yeah and 47 money it's pretty Pretty good, man. I think this is a pretty good corp. 
Yeah, I think this one's it's complicated. I mean, I don't know how how good this corporation is. Like, I, I mean, I think it's good. If I had to choose, I think I'd probably rather have lakefront resorts if I were playing like a an actual yeah. competitive game. But I, I do think this one's good. Um, I do think it's a good corporation. Um, one downside. Well, actually, no, this isn't even a downside. So, like, I was going to say that that greenery you place opens up for, you know, like, people can start putting stuff around it, like a city, and, like, snipe a point off of you. But that gives you a resource. It does. I, and I think that they, like, I think that that's part of what they, right. what they planned with it. But... And and where you place that opening greenery is quite important. I mean, I, I think you want to put it somewhere like just kind of in the middle of the board. You, like just take up a bunch of space and make it difficult for people to work around you. Um, you know, because you're kind of inviting people to put something down there, not as opposed to where you usually, if you have to throw down a greenery tile early, you're usually trying to figure out how to protect it. In this case, you don't want to yeah. do that. You just want to throw right. it out there and be like, all right, you know, here it is. Right. I mean, wouldn't you want to put it like in that that left of the ocean area that we usually do? Um, I'd probably put this one next to Nocta City. You know, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I, what do you think I, on this one? I I'm gonna give this one a B minus. I think I think I'm gonna have a hard time not playing this just because it's so annoying for everybody, and I, I just you know I like to I like to be that guy, but. Um, I don't know if it's actually that strong. Um, I don't know either. I think it would be fun. Um, like I said earlier, it's really dependent on ground game. So for that, because of that, you know, you want to get plant cards, you want to get city cards. I think protected habitats is important for this corp. Um... Yeah, I might go B plus on this one. Oh, you're going B plus, huh? Yeah, tentatively. I think this could be really good. But it's it's I think this is a swingy one. Because like listen, it gets you like the the milestone fight is really strong for Philaris. It is. That's and that's a good point. It it almost it almost resembles like uh Tharsis on the original board, you know, getting to right. that city and having a building tag. Exactly. So yeah, if you start off with some like uh, some cards that get you into greenery really quickly, like you know you're gonna you're gonna get gardener. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I like I think about um, you know when people play almost any corporation. If you play um, uh, an early Arctic algae, exactly. You know, yeah. like it, you're just like ah, oh, it's like that that feeling of like oh man, they're gonna get gardener so easily. Um, and this one is even better than that because it just gives it to you. Yep. Like you're, you don't have to protect the plants. You, I mean, you don't rely on people to play those ocean tiles. You're just like, boom, here's my greenery tile. Like, come after me. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I, I think it's pretty decent. All right, the last last corporation for this video. Um, this one, I'm I'm very excited to play. Yeah. Terra Labs. I think. This is well, let's, probably let's run one it down of the most first. complicated uh, <laughs> opening, you know, or like corporation evaluations yeah. really out there. So yeah, let's let's run it down. So you start with only fourteen money, and you lose one TR to begin with. However, buying cards to your hand only costs one money, <laughs> including your starting hand. One money for every card. Oh, and by the way, you start with a science tag and an earth tag and an earth tag. So yeah, this is really crazy. This is a really interesting corp. One of the most interesting corps that Fresenius has come up with. Um, so essentially, like, I mean, the first thing I, the, the first thing I would say, Nima, is that it basically means that buying cards is it's almost free. It's free, yeah. Because if you if you don't want the card, you can sell it. Yeah. So, so like any card, any time you have an opportunity to get a card, you can just buy it, knowing that if you don't want it, you can just sell it. Exactly. It it, it is no penalty to buy a card. So yeah, that's freaking sweet. Um, now, okay, so obviously the big elephant in the Terra Lab here is the fourteen money. 
<laughs> you no. do not want an elephant in your Terra lab. No, you really don't. So 14 money is obviously a huge problem. So like what are the kind of things you want to do with Terra Labs? You want to build up your economy early real quick. So something like acquired company is a good card. Um and other cards that you might want to do include the like the the ones that kind of have a detriment to you at, at the beginning, right? The like indentured workers. For example, the Normally, you might not like that card too much, but with when you start with fourteen money, that eight that eight cash discount can mean everything to you. Yeah, indentured workers and investment loan, for example. Yeah, like these cards are are like they're actually great in your opening hand with Terra Labs because it starts to boost your economy up into the zone of like a normal corporation. Right. So yeah, basically, basically what you want is cheap economy with Terra Labs. So the, like the cheap mines, like mine or titanium mine, uh, you, you that fourteen money, you're really not going to be able to play much in your early uh, early game. So yeah, stuff like this is really important. Yeah, I I agree. Like the like mine titanium, um, you know, like titanium mine, like any of these just sort of cheap uh, production cards. I think, I think Terra Labs, you know, like the I, if you were gonna try and craft your ideal hand, you know, it would it would include something like uh, one of these investment loan cards or indentured workers, something like this. It would include uh, something like uh, Earth Office, and then some of these like you know Earth Tag based production cards that were like you know acquired company or um sponsors you know or if you have a couple of these you know maybe something like uh cartel right like basically because it comes with an earth tag on it if if you get some kind of combination of these like earth tag cards that like boost your production you can kind of you could just have these like you know, you kind of dig yourself out of the hole early and just have this unbelievable yeah. late game where you can just take every single card that comes into your hand. Right. That's the thing. Like, you're going to have a slow early game with this corp. I don't, there's not much getting around that. It's, unless you just draw like the perfect hand, um, it's probably going to be pretty slow. Yeah. I mean, it's worth noting that, I mean, you're basically a lock for planner. I mean, you, you'd right. have to, I mean, it just basically hands you a milestone. Right. Right. I mean I don't know. I, I think I think this corporation could be a real dark horse. I I mean fourteen is is pretty nerfed. Um what that tells me is that they they played with this card and it was too powerful and they kept they <laughs> right. kept right because there's no corporation that, that starts you at fourteen. I mean, the, right. the, the, even like the the smallest amount of cash that you start is in the twenties or something like that with mining mining guild, but you start with five steel and a and a steel production. You know, right. so like, yeah, to the point where they even dock to your TR one step. <laughs> right, like they start you with fourteen and dock your TR. Like my guess is that they started this card much higher and it just completely dominated. Right. Yeah, you know what's interesting is there's some cards in the game that allow you to look at cards to see if you want to buy them or not. So now that becomes much better too. Completely, right. like they're like, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, like all of the cards, um, all of the cards that let you just sort of peek at peek and buy. Like that's yep. what you're talking about. Exactly. Um, yeah, I'm trying to find an example of one of those right now, but. Um, uh, yeah, all of those cards are just incredible because you just get to. You, I mean, you're gonna take the card every single time. It's just a free card. Yep. Um, so yeah, the, we haven't talked about science at all here. So like, you do start with a science tag, and science is a cheap way into getting really powerful stuff, right? So uh, much like Inventrix, that's a really good way to go with Terra Labs. Now. It can be expensive to get into it, which is something Terra Labs 
or Inventrix has over Terra Labs. Inventors Guild is an example yeah, of a yeah, of a that's peek what and I, buy. yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. Um, and then there's actually one of them that that gives you an Earth tag too, um, and that one could be good if you have like these this kind of Earth tag centric type of draw, but. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not sure that the science route is actually where you want to go with Terra Labs. Like it, the like if you think about the way that science usually unfolds, like you do have to invest quite a bit of cash early to get your tag right. number up. Um, I think where Terra Labs might be good with science is just that you're gonna draw so many cards that I think middle like mid game when you've gotten your economy back up and you're you can kind of sequence things out so that if you have the the science payoffs that you could go that route like you I don't think that you're you have to go into it you can just sort of have so many cards in hand that you can just sequence your plays however it's best for you like if it turns out that you have an insane science draw on gen 6 you can just dump those cards out and, and take advantage of it yeah I, I I think you're right like science is ultimately expensive and given you really want to be building economy up, science is not necessarily a good, great way to do that. There is some economy in there, but eventually, like the the big payoffs of science are like mass converter, right? Like the the big uh, power cards, right? And then you know eventually uh, anti grav technology, right? Right. So, yeah, it it may it may not be the best for this. I think you're. I think you're totally right that this this category of card becomes much better, right? Yeah. Because uh, and the other one's business action network. And unfortunately, I don't have a a picture of that one. But um, basically, like these cards are just free rolls now. Yeah. And they just let you see so many more cards. Right. And Avengers Guild is cheap. So. Yeah. I mean, I. I don't know. This this corporation is is a, is a challenge to rate. Um, I mean, you can you can clearly tell that they were worried about this corporation being too powerful. <laughs> yeah. And so then the question is, did they nerf it too much? Right. Like, right. is fourteen just too much of a hole to dig out of? And if that's the case, then maybe this is more of like a combo corporation where if you have the right opening accelerants in your in your hand. Yeah. Then it just becomes amazing, in the same way like Phobolog, for example. You know, like if you have, you know, if you have certain cards in your opening hand with Phobolog, it just becomes amazing, right? You know, like if you have, and we've talked about this before, but you know, if you have cheap ways to boost your titanium, or if you have like, um, you know, advanced alloys or something, you know, Phobolog just becomes this, you know, insane start. And I'm just wondering if Terra Labs. Is it is it that ca category? Is it a glass cannon that you you just have the right stuff and it's amazing, or or just unplayable if you don't, or is it just good all the time? I I would sort of doubt it's good all the time. Um, if if you don't have economy boosts, then I think it's terrible, frankly. Um, or alternatively, if you have good card draw early. It could be good, as long as you have ways to get into cards, like into economy cards, then it's better. But at the same time, you have very little money to even get those kinds of cards down. So yeah, I would say you need cheap economy at the beginning. Well, is it is well, Terra Labs is Terra Labs just terrible, <laughs> or is it is it good? I don't know. I what are you gonna uh, give it, man? I, like you said, it's tough. I I think I tend to tentatively give it like a B minus, maybe a C plus. I'm I I don't know. I I'm I'm kind of leaning towards thinking that this is more of like a glass cannon type of thing, I, or a combo a combo corp, where you know I'm I'm sort of leaning to you know like where you are where. If you have the right cards, I think this is just going to be a flat A. Mm. I mean, if you if you have a way to bump your economy by three or four in the first couple of generations, 
you know, you have some combination of cartel or acquired company or, you know, you yeah. kind of get earth office, you kind of get this earth tag strategy going early and you get some benefit from it. I think that this is just going to be a flat A. I, um, but I think that if you don't have those sorts of cards in your opener, I think you're just going to be too far behind. I, yeah. I, I think I agree. Like this, this corp and also lakefront, I think are pretty dependent on your opening hand. Like I, I'm not sure I would take lakefront if I didn't have any ocean cards, for example. And I think it's the same with this. I, I disagree because I, I think the thing about Lakefront is that other people are still going to play Oceans. I mean, that's true. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I guess like it's you're, less. You're just going to get. It's just like Saturn Systems. Like, you're just yeah. going to get this passive benefit. And Lakefront like, starts you with 50 something cash. Yeah, true, true. I, I, it's le- you're right. It's less dependent on your opening hand than this is. But yeah. Um, I. I get the this might have been nerfed too much. We'll we'll see. It's interesting. I I think I mean just the amount that we've talked about these four corporations. I mean Lakefront I think is is pretty straightforward, just solid, you know. But the other ones that we've talked about in this in this video are just a testament to like how how great a job they did with these corporations. I mean they these look yeah. really fun to play with. Yeah, I agree. These these are much more interesting than the previous core packs they've come up with. Yeah. Um, all right, Nemo. Well, I think that's a good that's a good start. Um, we'll take on the other corporations in this uh, in this set in another video. Yeah, and uh, by the way, we know we haven't we never finished the corp set for the original game. We'll get to that for sure. Um, so don't worry about that. But yeah, thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, make sure to check us out on YouTube and Twitch. Uh, we're at Cardboard Mars on Twitter. And uh, for Nate, I am Nima. And take it easy, guys. Keep terraforming. <laughs>